as we prepare to celebrate our Mass this evening. We begin with our first hymn, hymn number 689, The Coming of Our God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Happy New Year. A strange thing to say, perhaps, on this uh, cold, dark 26th of November, but the start of Advent with this Mass for our parish marks the new liturgical year we begin once more that cycle of prayer. This season of Advent, our colour changes to purple, to the prayer colour of preparation and awaiting. We await two things particularly in this season. We await the return of our Saviour at the end of time. And we await the great celebration of his first coming, in a few weeks at Christmas. As we journey with the Lord through Advent, we will be light our Advent wreath. So I'm just going to go over, bless the Advent wreath and light the first candle before I forget. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of time. We thank you for the gift of the world we thank you for this wreath. Help us through it and its symbolism, the circle of time and your love. May the light which will shine brightly as the weeks approach the celebration of the birth of your son, help us to recognize your light in our hearts and in our worlds. We ask you to bless this wreath, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and help all who see it all who are enlightened by it to come closer to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
with our Advent journey truly begun. We come before the Lord. We come with our prayers, our petitions, our needs and our gratitude. And in our Mass this evening, we pray especially for the repose of the souls of Harold and Ellen Stringer. As we come before the Lord, we recognise that as we await the great second coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ, we need his mercy and forgiveness. And so we turn to him and ask for his mercy and forgiveness for all our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the days to come, the mountain of the temple of the Lord shall tower above the mountains and be lifted higher than the hills. All the nations will stream to it. Peoples without number will come to it. And they will say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. Since the law will go out from Zion and the oracle of the Lord from Jerusalem, he will wield authority over the nations and adjudicate between many peoples. These will hammer their swords into plowshares, their spears into sickles. Nation will not lift sword against nation. There will be no more training for war. O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the response is, I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's law it is, there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. For the peace of Jerusalem pray, peace be to your homes. May peace reign in your walls, in your palaces, peace. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. For love of my brethren and friends, I say, peace upon you. For love of the house of the Lord, I will ask for your good. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You know the time has come. You must wake up now. Our salvation is even nearer than it was when we were converted. The night is almost over. It will be daylight soon. 
Let us give up all the things we prefer to do under cover of dark. Let us arm ourselves and appear in the light. Let us live decently as people do in the daytime. No drunken orgies, no promiscuity or licentiousness, and no wrangling or jealousy. Let your armour be the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in Noah's day, so will it be when the Son of Man comes. For in those days before the flood, people were eating, drinking, taking wives, taking husbands, right up to the day Noah went into the ark and they suspected nothing till the flood came and swept all away. It'll be like this when the Son of Man comes. Then of two men in the fields, one is taken, one left. Of two women at the millstone grinding, one is taken, one left. So stay awake, because you do not know the day when your master is coming. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what time of the night the burglar would come, he would have stayed awake and would not have allowed anyone to break through the wall of his house. Therefore, you too must stand ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we begin our season of Advent, a time when we reflect on the coming of Christ, both his second coming at the end of time and his first coming at the Nativity. Jesus' words are very timely, for at this time of the year there are so many so-called Christmas parties and many tempting festive feasts flooding the supermarkets and many sales in the shops and cards to be sent off and plenty of preparations and tasks to be done. In short, at this time of the year, there are plenty of opportunities for overindulgence. We might well enjoy some of these things, which we ought to, but in moderation. However, Jesus also warns us to be aware lest our hearts are coarsened through these things. What does it mean? Minds to be, um, it means that, um, to be cautious, there are many activities and preparations and parties can harden our hearts and make them less sensitive to the one thing necessary. A cautioned heart is less sensitive to God, less open to the many opportunities to receive his graces, less attuned to his coming among us and indeed to his presence in our lives. We call this season Advent therefore to remind us that God is coming among us. And the Lord tells us to be vigilant, watchful, to stay awake, praying at all times for strength. The Lord is coming, and his coming is not a threat or something to be feared or worried about, but something we long for with joyful expectation, because he comes through the giving of grace when we pray to strengthen us. He comes in the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, to fill us with his love and draw us closer to himself, he comes at last to see our free from the agonies of sin, suffering and death. 
Indeed, for us Christians, God comes often. After all, his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is, as the Psalms say, a very present help in times of trouble. Hence, while others might die of fear as they wait, what menaces the world, we Christians too, that even as the powers of heaven are shaken, the nations of the earth are in agony, the Lord is here. Jesus tells us, in fact, to stand erect, hold our heads high, because he promises to come to free and save us. Christians, therefore, are called to be a light to the world, to shine in the darkness with the hope of God's help, the hope of Emmanuel, indeed the hope of the risen Lord Jesus. The many twinkly lights that brighten our streets at this time is a, a symbol of what you and I are called to be. For the light in our own Christian faith and our hope in God has to be brought into our neighbourhoods, into our places, our workplaces and our homes. Hence the Lord tells us to watch yourselves, watch how you behave in front of your colleagues and friends and family. Be careful, Jesus says, not to let our hearts be coarsened with debauchery and drunkenness. For it is possible that if we join everyone else in making Advent into a time of consumerism, partying and drinking, then nobody will realise that in fact Advent is about preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Instead our behaviour might say that something else is king, like cash and gifts. Their Christmas slogan is, have must-haves that make Christmas. And this means the tastiest food, and the perfect gift, the right drink and the best clothes. And yet, the only thing we must have to make Christmas is Jesus Christ. And he comes for us freely. Thus Jesus says, pray at all times for the strength to survive all that is going to happen and to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. So the one thing we need to do, especially during Advent, is to pray at all times. If we turn to God in prayer, Jesus promises to give us strength to survive, not just to survive the Christmas rush and all the stress of this time of year, but more importantly, to survive the seductions of sin and the distractions of a world that does not know God. Instead, we Christians are called or given God's own strength, the power of the Holy Spirit, to survive at all that life can throw against us, so that we can stand at last in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. For the Lord comes and he is present among us. God is with us and we need to pray if our eyes are to be open to see him and we need to pray if our hearts are to be ready to welcome him. So Jesus says too, do not let the cares of life coarsen your hearts. That is to say, do not become so worried about all the things you have to do that you become anxious and upset. For many, Advent and Christmas can indeed be full of pressures, relationship strain and worries. But worrying has never changed any situation or solved any problem. So the Lord tells us to do something that does make a difference. Pray. And if we pray, God's Holy Spirit will transform our hearts. As St. Paul prays in his letter to the Thessalonians, God, we believe, will increase our love for one another and confirm our hearts in holiness. So let our cares and our worries drive us to prayer to find refuge in God. So many are driven to, drunk, to drink and drugs or other forms of worldly escapism. But this is not the Christian way. We must turn to Jesus and pray always. As St. Paul says, brothers and sisters, we urge you to appeal to you to make more and more progress in the kind of life that you are meant to live, the life that God wants. At this time of the year, therefore, the church gives us a season of grace, a season of hope, and a season of true progress, we advance towards heaven by carving out some time and some space for God here and now. As we look for help to make space for God here and now, 
let us as a community join together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. As we start the church's new year, we continue to trust in the mercy and love of God our Father. And so we bring him our hopes and fears, our petitions and our thanksgiving in our prayers today. For the church on earth, as we begin our Advent journey, that we may have the strength and courage to spread God's love and mercy and to support each other in his holy work. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For those with power and authority in the world, that they may be touched by the gentle hand of the child, Christ child, to help them try to seek peace and justice in the world, with care for all people and for God's creation in this holy season. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For women and girls suffering violence and abuse, the Holy Father has called such violence an insult to God. And so we especially unite in prayer with the current United Nations campaign that we may all speak out against all abuse of the vulnerable, especially women and girls, doing all we can to raise awareness and challenge attitudes in ourselves and others. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For those who will not be enjoying gifts, parties, and plenty to eat at Christmas time, we think of the many who struggle to heat homes, pay rent, or buy the bare essentials, that we may be inspired to be generous with our time, resources, and talents. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For those suffering sorrow and grief in their families, that those who are bereaved or hurt by broken relationships may find healing, and that we may find courage to reconcile ourselves with Christ and each other during Advent. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. In silence, we offer these prayers and our own private intentions to God. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our let us commend all our prayers to Mary, Mother of our Saviour, as we say together, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, listen to the prayers of this, your family. During this Advent season, as we turn our hearts to you in love, help us to seek to care for each other, strengthened by your holy word. 
We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as we take, uh, prepare our altar for the Eucharist and we take up our collection, we place our prayers and petitions upon the altar. We remember especially in this Mass the repose of the souls of Harold and Ellen Stringer. For those who may be watching our recording, Mass at 8.30 on Sunday morning is offered for all our parishioners and at 10.30 for the repose of the soul of Mary MacDonald. As we prepare our altar, we sing our next hymn, hymn number 90. It's there somewhere. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. May what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Open up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Do we pray the second Eucharistic prayer? 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, Paul, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who can reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. The Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, I ask you please uh, to be seated once more. Uh, anybody who has read our nice new, uh, nice purple, Lenten purple newsletter um, will have seen the good news of item two in the newsletter. The presbytery sale has exchanged contracts. And I know some people say, oh, normally it takes a month between exchange and completion. Well, we managed a week. Uh, it's taken us 18 months to get here, about, just around and about. So having it the last little bit shortened is a, a great bonus, I suppose. And so uh, by Tuesday, um, at some point or whatever, however these works, I've never bought anything, I've never sold anything property-wise, however it works, um, at some point Tuesday, we will have uh, handed over the ownership of the house and as I put in the newsletter, it is to a family, not to a family of developers. Uh, I've met their little daughter. She had her fifth birthday party in the scout hut as they couldn't find anywhere else at the time. They said, you wouldn't mind us borrowing it. I know it's a bit of a cheek. And uh, said, no, no, not at all. So they were able to, to have that. The, the little girl wanted her birthday in her new house and couldn't quite work out why she couldn't move in yet. Um, so they used, they used the scout hub. At the time, I couldn't understand why it was taking so long either, but there we are, it, it's happened. So uh, uh, come the new, I think between now and Christmas, there's too much going on. So come the new year, we will really start to focus on, on how we move up forward now that the sale has completed. Um, and just to, so, to reassure you, I'm not in a tent. I am in a house somewhere. Uh, and so I'm still reasonably warm despite uh, not having the main presbytery anymore. Christmas fair, uh, two weekends away, so we look forward to that on Saturday the 10th, and then in the morning after both the morning masses. Um, there is a volunteer meeting this uh, coming Thursday, six o'clock in the social centre, so if you have volunteered, please do come along. Uh, if you haven't volunteered and would like to, you can come along as well. Um, you, you may want to write your name on the list, uh, which is still at the back of the church, but if you turn up, 
I'm sure we'll give you a job to do somewhere along the line. And so if you have anything to donate, that too would be useful. Um, Parish Youth Group will be gathering this time next week uh, for its very first uh, inaugural session. So please pray for that and encourage anybody uh, at school year six and above uh, all the way through to university age. I think we decided that once they go to university or at 18, um, they would probably not want 11-year-olds around, around them at the time. But uh, anybody is most welcome to come along and help, but just do let Joanna know, uh, particularly because uh, if the whole parish turns up, we'll need more pizza. Uh, First Communion, we mentioned that last week, and I have got the forms this week. Last weekend, I managed to leave them in the, uh, uh, the office, but that's, uh, that's there as well and uh, everything else I think is reasonably understandable. Um, during the week, uh, I went to visit uh, Mary Riddell. Mary sits on the watered bench, just where the pink towel is. Uh, Mary is actually very poorly now, uh, although she was in fine spirits when I saw her the other day. Um, she has cancer and uh, it's uh, uh, not, uh, not a good prognosis, but in her 90s, she's uh, cheerful about uh, where where things are going to. So we had a good laugh and a good chat and I was managed to take her communion as she's already been having communion during the week anyway and gave her the sacrament of the sick. So um, I don't think she watches on the video, but if you are, sorry to embarrass you. Um, we have mass for her this coming Friday morning, which I'm going to record and uh, one of her sons is going to try and get off the internet to show her that uh, we're, she's still in our prayers. So we keep her and all of those who are in our sick list in our prayers at this time. Um, the month of November draws to its close. Uh, today at Mass I put the November list upon the altar and so we will keep remembering all the faithful departed at this time. Invite you please to stand. The Lord be with you. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing forever and ever. As you run the race of this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And as we conclude our Mass this evening, we finish with hymn number 248, He Who Would Valiant Be. Oh, is it 243? Okay. <laughs> 243. Hark a herald voice is calling. We could be valiant, but not this evening.